Hello everyone and welcome to this brand new and I must say rather unique Kerbal Space Program adventure. Because today we are sending a generation ship to a distant frozen planet Elu and we are doing that with modular colonization systems mod suite and MKS life support mod installed. If you don't know what MKS is or what it introduces be sure to watch my tutorial series about it by clicking on the top right notification on your screen. As you can see our ship is already in orbit because not only you have seen me put larger creations into orbit many times already, but also because there is a lot to talk about in terms of ship design and details about our journey and I wanted to focus on that. If you however wonder how such vessels get into orbit on my channel, check the card in the top right corner. With MKS life support installed, we now need to provide for our Kerbals throughout the entire journey and because Elu is so far away from the sun, I assume the round trip will take anywhere under 100 years. We know that base supplies consumption is 10.8 per Kerbal per day and we want to have 8 crew members eventually on our ship. Our ship has recyclers that reduce supplies consumption by 86.5% and are rated for 8 Kerbals, so our final consumption will be 11.7 supplies per day for the entire crew. Now we can further reduce that amount through agroponics, which will convert one unit of fertilizer into 11 units of supplies. The large greenhouse we have installed on our ship has a throughput of 4.75 supplies per hour, so its production is much higher than our needs. We can assume, with some margin, that to support our crew we will need 1.2 units of fertilizer per day and uh, 33,200 units for 100 years. I took a little bit more, just in case. To ensure our Kerbals are happy and don't refuse to work throughout the entire journey, we also need to take care about their living conditions. Our ship is equipped with two large artificial gravity rings that provide 497 Kerbal months of habitation. We also have a couple of Kerbitats configured as common living spaces, each adding some small amount of Kerbal months, but more importantly, providing a multiplier of 5.42 to our existing living space. For our 8 crew members to stay happy for a hundred years we need 9600 Kerbal months and when we add everything up we should be relatively close to that number. Since currently there are only 4 Kerbals on board, total hub length is 200 years as you can see. Also note that when hub time for individual Kerbals exceeds 50 years it's shown as indefinite. Our ship is also equipped with a colonization module, which is a very interesting part. It has two functions. First, it can extend your Kerbal hub and home timers indefinitely if you can provide it with constant supply of colony supplies. In our case it would require bringing along a massive shipment of those to support our crew for a hundred years, which is not really feasible. Second function is much more interesting because it allows creation of new Kerbals through colony growth. In order to make that, we need to put one male and one female Kerbal in the module, give them some colony supplies and leave them for some time. Since this is such an important mission, I charged Jap and Valentina with this very, very important task of providing four extra crew members to our ship. MKS habitats, as well as many other parts, require machinery in order to function. So to benefit from the massive hub space provided by artificial gravity rings, we need to bring enough machinery with us. One ring consumes 1.08 machinery per day, so to keep it supplied for a hundred years we need to bring in 38,880 units of machinery. Since we have two rings and our machinery container holds 54,000 units plus 5,000 units that are stored in the rings themselves, we are supplied for about 75 years, assuming 100% load on both rings. On top of that we have 32,000 units of colony supplies that are consumed at the rate of 3 units per hour. Electricity is provided by one 2.5 meter nuclear reactor that consumes 0.13 units of enriched uranium per hour. Assuming that it will be operating at full capacity all the time, we need to bring in 4,680 units of fuel to keep it fed for 100 years. It's surely an overkill, but you don't want to run out of power when you're out there and freezing, right? So those are pretty much all of the important features of our ship. Last information that you are missing is the Delta V that we have and this ship should have about 9000 or almost 9000 meters per second of Delta V. 
We have an abysmal thrust to weight ratio that required us to do multiple burns and we actually needed to start burning for Joule the first time, um, two weeks before the launch window. And we are burning for Joule not because we actually need um, a gravity assist from Joule, we are also burning in a very wrong spot to get that, but because KSC asked us to bring in some nice pictures from the trip and Joule is a really good system to get those. So we needed to do um, the Kerbin escape first and uh, three or four consecutive burns and now we are leaving Kerbin sphere of influence as you can see and then the follow up burn that was slightly less efficient than it could have been followed up when we were in solar orbit and now our ship is ready to depart basically I mean it is already departed and it's on its maiden voyage to Ilu which is very interesting I must say I've never sent an uh, MKS ship that didn't use uh, some kind of different mechanisms to keep your Kerbals happy and alive for extended periods of time. So this ship is using everything that MKS provides and provides for their well-being for a hundred years. But once we were well established in our solar orbit, we could start reproducing. I mean, Jab and Valentina could actually start working on those extra crew members we asked them for. And uh, as you can see, they were really happy to provide us with an extra four crew members. And also what was interesting um, outcome of this, um, let's call it an experiment, is that we know that the Kerbal pregnancy takes about 100 days to get a new Kerbal or hatch a new Kerbal. I actually don't know how Kerbals reproduce, but we know that it takes 100 days to get a new one. So we welcomed four crew members on our ship, two engineers, one geologist and one technician, and we are very happy to have them with us. Um, we can all say they are siblings and uh, Jeb and Valentina are their parents, so they will have to probably have um, a natural chain of command going on there. Uh, and since this was done in a sandbox mode, we don't have to worry about um, money or science. And also those four new Kerbals were instantly leveled to level 5. And as you can see, those Kerbals were actually born when we were really close to Duna. So maybe that makes them Dunans, but definitely what happened is that those were the first Kerbals that were born outside of Kerbin, at least in my space program. Next step in our journey was making a small correction maneuver node um, before the Joule system so we could actually get a gravity assist that was just a tiny bit that would get us in an intersecting orbit with ELO. As you can see we are getting that gravity assist in a very wrong place in order to get like an advantage to actually have an orbit that is similar to ELO's orbit. That doesn't really matter because our delta V is so much higher and uh, we have much more than we actually need. But nevertheless, we wanted to have a relatively nice and scenic flyby of the Joule system, so we needed to do that small burn. And here we are. I actually really like Joule flybys and I really like missions to the Joule system. And I have this feeling that I haven't done enough of them. It's a very interesting system in itself, actually. There's a lot of bodies that you can discover and uh, all of them are pretty unique. And uh, I don't think they actually get the deserved attention, really. Like... Uh, at least from me. I uh, haven't sent as many missions to Jewel as uh, I would have wanted. Definitely many more to Duna and Mon. And the uh, Jewel system is much more interesting uh, from different perspectives. But after this was done, our next step was basically coasting to the intersection with Elu orbit. And uh, we could have taken a look at how we are faring with regards to machinery and uh, supplies consumption and everything uh, like that and as you can see we were consuming everything at the rate that was actually predicted so it was really good meaning that our supplies levels are not dropping because our greenhouses are producing much more than we need and we packed in some extra mulch <laughs> in order to <laughs> to be supplied with that at least and um, whatever our Kerbals are producing in terms of mulch is already converted with fertilizer in the greenhouses to give us even more supplies than we need so supplies are not dropping the only thing that will be dropping are uh, is fertilizer and maybe mulch and uh, machinery wise we also had uh, much more than we needed uh, at least for this part of the journey and we were consuming that on a, at a very slow rate. When we got to the point when we were intersecting with Ilu's orbit, we needed to perform another 500 meter burn in order to get us reorbits later in a Ilu encounter. 
and that was obviously done we had a very long time to do that even with our abysmal thrust to weight ratio we could have pulled that easily and we obviously have more than enough fuel to do it so well nothing really special happened there and once it was done i decided to take another look at our life support status and consumption of different materials and currently we are five years and 285 days in the trip and as you can see um well everything is looking fine uh, the timer on our individual kerbals is still showing the indefinite time but the real timer that you can see on top of the life support status window says 74 years over which is um well what we expected really the reason why it is slightly smaller than 100 years is because the machinery level in the hub rings drop therefore the load is less than 100 but we'll fix that once we get to elu right now we needed to wait three orbits or over 30 years in this solar orbit until we got elu encounter so i'm really happy that we brought enough living space and enough supplies enough everything for our kerbals to stay happy for that long period of time because it's not over for them and um, once it was done it was time to actually have an elo encounter before that obviously we needed to perform a really small correction burn that would place our periapsis even closer to elo's surface in order to make even more efficient insertion burn but that was also nothing relatively special so once it was done we were on our way to encounter elo and once we entered elo's sphere of influence well, that was the last time where I decided to take a look at our life support status. And as you can see, we've spent over 40 years in the journey right now. And the hub time for our Kerbals shows, well, below 50. So it's no longer indefinite. And this is because of the lower machinery level. As you can see, our fertilizer level also dropped slightly. But nothing dangerous happened there. So we're good. We're good. We arrived at Ilu and now we needed to perform 800 meters, over 800 meters um, circularization burn to actually get captured. And um, there we go. We arrived at Ilu. Our final destination and we still have enough Delta V, enough machinery, enough supplies, enough everything to actually go back home. I am really happy that we arrived here and we arrived here using less than half of the initial materials and supplies that we brought along so we definitely can make it back home. I won't be showing you how to do that because this is a challenge I actually wanted you to do. Can you bring this ship back to Kerbin? You have everything you need and the save file will be provided in the video description. Please do it. Show me how you do it post a video response to that video and I'll be happy to watch it and share it with you and I will promote it on my channel as well. So thank you very much for watching I hope that you've enjoyed and if you enjoyed please consider liking this video. I would also like to thank my patrons on Patreon especially Joe Latham, Shirax, Luke, Carl Roth and everyone else who is supporting me. It means really much to me. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.